Howdy guys and welcome back. This week I have four awesome builds for you. That's right, it's that time again for another round of the We Make Sawdust Challenge. For this challenge, I team up with Sabertooth Tools and we challenge three other makers to join me in carving one build challenge. This time the challenge was something you can find in the kitchen. And we made spoons, a skull candy bowl, three hardwood spice cellars, and one margarita platter. Let me show you how. As part of the challenge, participants can only use the carving burrs provided. So let's take a look at the carving burrs for round four of the We Make Sawdust Challenge. First is a 5 8 inch roto saw and coarse grit. Then we have a 3 8 inch dovetail burr and coarse grit. A 3 8 inch flame burr and extra fine grit. And lastly, a quarter inch ball nose burr and extra fine grit. Now let's get on to the builds and our carvings. And me, Sadie Mae with the Awesome Orange is up first with spoons and more spoons. I wasn't quite sure on what type of spoon I wanted to make, so I started by tracing some old spoons I had on hand to get a basic layout on several different types of wood. I had some cherry, some ash, and some alder. Then I took the blanks over to the bandsaw to remove any excess material. Doing this helps the carving go so much faster and gives you an initial shape to start carving with. I am newer to the bandsaw, so my shapes aren't perfect, but that's okay because I'll be carving any of the rough edges smooth. I'm really excited to see how this Osage orange spoon turns out. I'm doing a heavier like scoop dip to it. So we'll see, my first time trying it this way. The weather is finally getting nice in Arizona. So I took my carving outside to give my dust collector a little break. And I started carving use the 5 8 inch roto saw in coarse grit to remove the bulk of the scoops of the spoons. I use a dragging or pulling motion for this and just try and let the burr do the work with little pressure. Doing it this way I find that it leaves less marks that need to be sanded out later. It can be easy to over carve at this stage, so I'm making sure to constantly be checking the thickness of my piece. I don't want to remove all the material from the scoop portion to its final depth just quite yet. And then I repeated the process on all the other blanks I cut out. Next, it was on to the outsides of the spoons, and I used the 3 8 inch dovetail burr and coarse grit to shape these. This is my first time really using this burr, and it won't be the last. With its tapered shape, it worked great to shape the curves on the back sides of the spoons. Also, I'm loving my new pan of ice that we got in the challenge boxes. It clamps to your workbench so it's mobile and it pivots and rotates easily so you can totally get in the zone of carving without having to unclamp and reclamp clamp your pieces constantly. A little more shaping of the insides and then it was on to the next spoon. You'll notice I'm using two different rotary tools, the Dremel 8260 and the Works Maker X. Both are portable, so it makes it easy to carve outside. The Dremel is bulkier, so not as comfortable to hold, but the battery charges much quicker than the Works Maker X. But the Maker X is so much more comfortable to hold and carve for longer durations. So it's up to you to decide which is best for you. I 
I did briefly refine the final shape of each spoon with the ball nose and extra frying garret before sanding. And then for sanding, I used 80 grit, 120, and then 220 grit. And then lastly, I carved a spoon rest. One of my favorite textures to carve is a honeycomb shape with a sphere burr. But since I couldn't use it for this challenge, I tried recreating it with the rotosaw, and it worked. Carving is so cool in that all burrs take away material. It's just a matter of finding the burrs that work best for you and what you're trying to carve. Then to add a little color to the ash pieces, I burn them to give them a black look and still keep them food safe. You'll notice that on the spoons, they almost turned into sporks because the edges were a little thin. So if you do try this, be sure to make the edges a little thicker than you think. And then for finish, I applied a couple, boat, couple coats of Total Boats Food Safe Wood Honey. And well, it just brought these spoons to life. Okay, be honest, which spoon is your favorite? The Ash Spatula, the Cherry Ladle, the Osage Orange Scoop, the Alder Ladle, or the Ash Spoons? Let me know in the comments below. All right, next up is Liz with Spry Carvings showing us how she carved a skull candy bowl. Liz is no stranger to carving, but she does normally do them on a bigger scale with chainsaw carvings of bears, owls, dogs, and more. For her carving, she used the ash wood that was provided in our challenge boxes from forest to home. She glued them together and then did what she does best, carve. more of Liz's carvings on her Instagram at Spry Carvings. Next is Val with C Val Creates and she created Three the Hardwood Way. Val is a total newbie to power carving and mostly makes awesome laser projects and grows yummy stuff in her garden. Val started off by practicing carving on some scraps before her actual piece, which I always recommend. Then she carved some cherry wood spice bowls with texture on the outside. She also created a textured Lazy Susan stand so it would be easy for entertaining. more of what Val creates on her Instagram at c.val.creates. Next is Katie with Addicted to DIY. Katie is no stranger to making or DIY, but this was her first go round at power carving. She chose to make a margarita platter from some local felled mesquite wood. She hollowed out a spot for the salt, and a spot for the limes. Then she took the platter to her laser where she engraved, if you're going to be salty, bring the tequila. I'm definitely craving a margarita now. You can find more of Katie's builds on her Instagram at addicted the number two to DIY.
Everybody did an awesome job on this challenge, but I need your help to pick a winner. So comment your favorite below and then head on over to the link in the description box to officially vote on your favorite from round four of the We Make Sawdust Challenge and you could be eligible to win a Sabertooth prize pack. Thanks for watching. Remember, build loud, build wild, and have an awesome day.